Hello, my name is Todd Dust, and I'm an Applications Engineer with Cypress Semiconductor in the PSOC group. Today, I'm going to be walking through an example of using PSOC 5LP to do a design that doesn't require any code. Imagine your boss comes up to you and says, hey, we need to implement an alarm system that uses analog voltages, and we don't want you to write any code or use the ADC. How are you going to implement this? Well, I'm here to show you a design that ju does just that. So first, let's open a new instance of PSOC Creator and create a new project. I'm going to call this project Analog Alarm. Let's save it to my desktop. And also make sure you choose PSOC 5LP. OK, so how are we going to get this to work? Well, first, let's look at the hardware that we have. What I have in front of me here is a CY8C Kit 059, or this is a PSOC 5LP prototyping kit. It comes in a nice cardboard package in the stamp. So it's a very nice kit. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. It just has the pins and it has a LED and a button that you can press to demonstrate things. So this is really useful for prototyping and developing your designs. So on this design we're going to be using this LED right here which you can see is flashing right now. And we're going to be using one of the inputs which is connected to an analog voltage or in this case a potentiometer that I'll be varying. And on the multimeter here you can see what the voltage is. So we know that we have one digital output, or LED, that we can use to indicate status. So your boss says, hey, I want to have four different alarm statuses. I want to have no alarm, the LED is off. I want to have a gentle alarm, where the LED is slowly fading in and out or breathing. I want to have a harsh alarm, where the LED is blinking very quickly. And then I want to have a full-on alarm, where the LED is just on all the time. So the first thing we're going to do is we know we need an LED. So let's grab a digital output, drag that onto our schematic, and let's call it LED. All right, so we have our LED placed. So your boss said that one of the things he wanted is for the LED to breathe on and off for one of the alarm levels. So how are we going to get that to work? Well, if you look at our getting started with PSOC 5 LP app note, or AN 77759, we already have that design documented for you. So you can go here to learn how that design works. I'm just going to take this design straight from here and copy it onto my schematic. So I have it in another project. And I'm just going to copy it over just to make things a little faster. All right, so here's my breathing LED. Move it around a little bit. The next thing my boss said that he wanted was an LED that turns on and off or blinks. So that's pretty easy to do. We just need a PWM running at a rate slow enough that the human eye can see it blinking on and off. So we'll just set up a PWM and clock it. And so I'm going to grab a PWM component from my catalog, put it in here. I'm going to get a clock, connect that clock up. In this case, I'm going to set my clock to 100 hertz, just so it's nice and slow. And then I'm going to set the period to 50, and the compare value to 25. And I only want one output, so I'll do that and say OK. So now the period is 510 milliseconds, or about half a second. All right, so we have our breathing LED, our blinking LED, and then he said he wanted it off and on. So that's easy. That's just a, a logic high and a logic low. So we can easily grab those from the component catalog. Here's our logic high. Then we'll grab a logic low. So now we have our four alarm signals, the always on or logic high, the blinking, the breathing LED, and the always off or logic low. So now we need to get those four signals to our LED. So to do that, I'm going to use a MUX. So I can search for MUX in my catalog here. And I'm going to use this multiplexer, connect it up to our LED. And I can take my signals. So when it's 0, I'm going to have the logic low. 
and the value of the mux is 3, it's going to be the logic high. I'm going to take this signal from the PWM, route it here, and lastly, I'm going to copy the breathing and put it there. So now this mux will control which of these signals goes to the LED. So I also need to control the mux somehow. So I'm going to do that with all the wire. I'm going to label this wire for now mux control. And in a little bit, we'll configure how that control works. So we now have our digital setup done. So our boss has also told us that he wants the alarm to be off if the voltage is less than 250 millivolts. He wants it to be breathing if it's between 250 millivolts and 500 millivolts. He wants it to be blinking if it's between 500 millivolts and 750 millivolts, and he wants it to be on if it's above that. So we need a way to determine what the voltage is on our pin. And as I said before, we're not going to do any code, so this needs to be all done in hardware, so we can't use the ADC. So one thing we can use is PSOC 5 has four comparators and four DACs. So we can use those comparators and DACs and configure them to trip at the voltages I just mentioned. So let's grab some of those. So if I search in here, for a comparator, I can grab a comparator. I can also grab a voltage DAC. And I can connect those guys together. So we'll do this. And then we're going to need three of these. And I'm going to wire them all up to the same input. And I'm using on this board, there's labels on all of these pins. So I'm using P30 as my analog input. So I'm just going to grab an analog pin, and we'll remember that it's P30 when we assign the pins. Grab my analog pin, connect it up. Okay, so now my input goes to these three comparators. So now I need to set the voltage level on each of these VDACs. So we said the boss wanted 250 millivolts, so this one we're going to set to 250 millivolts. We're going to apply, and it gets to 248 just because of the resolution of this guy, but that's close enough for this exercise. The other one is 500. We apply there, we got exactly 500, and then the last one was 750 millivolts. And we get 748. Okay, so now we have our analog portion and our digital portion. What we need to do is we need to link these together. Now, if you'll notice, the MUX control is only two bits. But we have three bits coming out of our comparators. So we have three comparators. So how do we get the three comparator outputs to control the two-bit MUX line? Well, that's where our lookup table comes in. So in the component catalog, there's a lookup table. I can grab that, and I can drop this. So the lookup table is a simply helps you create Verilog state machines. So in this case, I'm going to configure my lookup table to have three inputs and two outputs. So I have the two output control lines, and I have the three input control lines. And I'm going to say OK for now. And what I need to do is I need to define some outputs on these comparators. So I'm just going to move this down to give me some more room. And I'm going to create some wires here. And I'm going to give this wire a name. And what I'm going to name this is, let's call it millivolts 250. And then I'm going to copy it, put it up here. And this one will be millivolts 500. And then this one I will name millivolts 750. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, and I'm also going to connect them to the LUT. So I can do that. Do that. All right, so now I have my three comparator outputs connected to the input of this LUT, and then I also want to connect the output of this LUT to the MUX control line. So I'm going to do a wire here, and I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to name it the same as MUX control. So I'm going to say MUX underscore control. I'm going to set this to bit zero of MUX control. I'm going to copy that wire, 
connect to this output, and I'm going to set it to bit 1. All right, so now we need to configure the LUT to translate these three signals into the two signals for the MUX control line. So if we open up the LUT, we can do that configuration. So when all three of these guys are low, we want the output to be low because our boss said that he wanted the LED off when it was below 250 millivolts, and we noticed that zero, it's off. When only the N0 is high, so that would be millivolts 250, so when only this guy is high, that means the 250 millivolt alarm is on, which means we want to breathe the LED, which means we need to set the output to 1, which it already is set for us, so that's great. Uh, this configuration here, where just N1 is high, or just the 500 millivolt comparator is high, that's a not a valid configuration because the 250 millivolt signal should also be high at the same time. So that's never going to happen. So I'm just going to set that to zero because that should never happen. Now in the case where they're both high, that means we cross the 500 millivolt threshold, which means we need to turn the blinking LED on, which would be the second or third input here. So I'm going to set this guy to two. And then again, this guy is an invalid combination, so it should say zero. This is also an invalid combination. That's also an invalid combination. And then the last one is when they're all high. That's when we want the LED on, so we're going to set it to three to turn it on. Say apply. All right, so now I finished configuring my schematic, but looking at my schematic, I realized that there's one thing I forgot to do. These comparators still have clock inputs, and we don't want that, so we need to get rid of that. So if we open the comparator, we're just going to set the sync to bypass, because we don't want to synchronize the outputs today. All right, now my schematic's complete. Now it's time to go assign the pins that we're going to use. So we go to the design-wide resources. I'm going to set my LED to pin 2-1. And I know it's pin 2-1 because it says for me so nicely on that kit there. And then I'm also going to set my input for P3-0 because that's where I connected my wire up to on there. And we're done with that. And then the very last thing we need to do is we need to start all of our components. So your boss might get a little mad at you that you're actually writing code because he's told you not to write code. But what you can tell him is all you're doing is initializing the components. And then after that, there's no more code that needs to run. Everything else is done in hardware. I already have all this code written. I'm just going to copy and paste it in. So that way you don't have to watch me type. So now it's copied in. And we're going to program the board. So after the board's done programming, what you should see is that when the voltage is below 250 millivolts, the LED is off. When it's between 250 millivolts and 500 millivolts, the LED should be breathing in and out. When it's between 500 millivolts and 750 millivolts, the LED should be blinking. And when it's above 750 millivolts, the LED should be on. Now, what this might be useful for is if you have some sort of process, maybe this is in a factory, and you want to monitor the voltage that that process is outputting, you can route this to a big light in your control room that would then indicate to the guys working in the control room that there's a problem. If it starts flashing at them, or if it turns on, they know there's a really big problem because the voltage is too high. So this is just an example of one way that you can use the PSOC hardware to implement cool and unique features. All right, so this is programmed, so let's turn on our multimeter. So right now I'm at 150 millivolts, and the LED is off. So let's turn the voltage up. Oh, let's go the other way and turn it up. So right now I'm getting close. Oh, I just crossed 250. And you can see that the LED is breathing on and off. And if I go up to around 500, see it's still breathing. Then we cross over, and now it's blinking. And then lastly, we'll go up to 750. And now it's on. So we've just created a very simple analog alarm system that was done all in hardware with PSOC 5 LP, and was done using this very nice CY8C kit 059 board, which you can purchase on the Cypress store. Hopefully you learned a lot today, and you're excited to use PSOC 5 LP in your future designs. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.